welcome to our Christmas Day service, the 25th of December 2023. And we join in our call to worship from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. O come all ye faithful. O come all ye faithful. We sing together. Our first reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Everyone on the move, shopping centres full of frantic, last-minute shoppers, people finishing work and heading off to the beach to see family, to the favourite camping spots, long lines of slow-moving traffic as everyone tries to head off at the same time for the same places, there's just no escaping the fact that when everyone is trying to do the same thing at the same time, it is tedious. Tempers fray, patience evaporates, and the potential for fights grows. And that's to say nothing of those who dwell in the lower rungs of society. The $2 shop is a stretch, and as the kids long for the latest $500 Xbox, the real question on their lips is how they can afford to pay for food this week. Holidays are simply those times when the kids get into trouble at home instead of at school. There's no heading off with the caravan or to the family crib. They couldn't afford the petrol anyway. Anything over and above existing is a chore and even existing gets difficult at this time of the year. Spare a thought for Joseph and Mary. Him out of work, both of them travelling, slowly and likely painfully. Nowhere to stay and no way to pay if there was. Looking forward to the baby being born, perhaps one less thing to worry about. Although probably more added along the way. No midwife, no medical team, no sanitary measures. Just a robe laid on the dirt floor for the child to be born. We sing about a silent night, a baby that doesn't cry. Angels singing, stars in the sky, shepherds and wise men and donkeys, and it all sounds so delightfully domestic and blissful. Likely nothing could be further from the truth of that time. This family had more in common with those wondering how to pay their power bill and put food on the table than it does with those fighting for the last box of roses at the supermarket and heading off for a lovely holiday by the lake. There are perhaps some who can relate. I know that I've never experienced anything like that. 
Perhaps Jesus' arrival is a message in itself. How do I see myself before this king born in poverty and chaos? We pray. Sunshine and rata blossoms, snow and pine trees, tinsel and glitter, wrapping paper and sellotape. Those who celebrate Christmas welcome this day. For others, it's merely a regular day in their week. Forgive us for the assumptions we make about our celebrations. It is so easy to forget that while Christmas can be a time of joy, it can also be a time of sorrow, of anger, of disappointment, or even a time of nothing much at all. Or even a time of nothing much at all. We live in a multicultural world, yet we so often get tunnel vision, thinking our way is the only way. Help us, God, to be a people who listen for those around us, who seek not to be understood, but to understand, who live and work for the sake of genuine peace, not of the political nature, but between human beings finding common ground as your creatures in this amazing world. We bring our private confessions to you now. Our God fulfills his promises and is true to his word. We have confessed our sins. God has forgiven us because Christ died for us. Amen. We sing together, O come all ye faithful. second reading is from Luke chapter 2, reading verses 8 to 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. Amidst the fight for survival comes a brief pause, a moment in time when we get to listen for what God is saying and doing. There is a sense of peacefulness when you think about a group of shepherds out in the wilderness settling in for the night, the darkened sky clear overhead, the sheep quieting and sleeping, talking about where they've been today, where the grazing might be best tomorrow, which sheep need an eye kept on, Plans for when they get back to town. It's not a luxurious life, but it is likely a peaceful life. Sure, there is the occasional wild animal to scare away, but following the sheep and caring for their needs has a rhythm to it that feeds the soul. It's easy to know if you're doing the right thing by the health of the sheep and a steadily growing flock. 
I can imagine a level of dismay when that tranquility is shattered by a rowdy bunch of angels lighting up the night sky. For one thing, everyone's settled and ready for sleep. For another, whenever someone says, do not be afraid, that is surely a sign you should be afraid. And another, who goes around talking about saviours and messiahs? Now, I think it is likely that most shepherds would be fairly hardened characters, and so they can probably pull together a modicum of control and begin thinking about what to do next. But really, this is all just weird. Angels and signs and singing you wouldn't read about, if you were able to read, that is. And why us, of all people? There are much smarter people, people with money, people with power, people with education. None of this makes sense. And now they want us to go and have a look. What about our sheep? We can't just leave them here. Are the angels offering to look after them? Don't think that Jesus comes to sing gentle lullabies and speak soothing words to give us peace. No, Jesus comes to interrupt and disrupt. Jesus comes at inopportune moments and breaks through our serenity to call us to action. I'm not sure how I feel about that at Christmas. We sing together, O come, all ye faithful. third reading is from the book of Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that we might redeem, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Chaos, poverty, disruption and interruption. The salvation thing is beginning to sound painful. Not only that, but our reading from Titus is enough to make the Puritans go all gooey and happy, renouncing impiety and worldly passions, being self-controlled, upright and godly. On the surface of it, we might replace the description with the words boring and unapproachable. I'm not sure I signed up for that when I asked Jesus to be my God and Saviour. So, I have to ask, what is going on here? How do I read this? Not simply to suit my preferences, but so I understand what God is attempting to tell me and you today. I find myself thinking about the fractious shepherds and the cast out parents in the stable. I'm quite sure that the rest of society would have seen them as impious, uncontrolled and quite the opposite of upright and godly. All of which begs the question, whose lens are we looking through? Let me ask some other questions. Is it impious to find God in nature? Is it uncontrolled to sing and dance in God's presence? Is it the opposite of upright? Is that downright? To ignore your cultural norms and bring a child into the world that is of somewhat problematic origins? 
What exactly is godly? What is the difference between worldly passions and passionate faith? How can I live my best life with all my heart and soul and mind and strength? Surely that means bringing my every talent and skill to bear, whether that be gardening or carpentry, sewing or chatting, singing or listening, laughing or crying, texting or talking, writing or running, golfing or cooking. You get my drift. I suspect the point Paul was making to Titus was to live life well, being careful not to be caught up in dumb stuff, but to put everything he had into being the best he could be. Perhaps that is the underlying message of Christmas. Rather than a list of don'ts, it's a list of do's. Do be the best person you're created to be. Be the best you can be. Be full of life and hope and joy and love and share what you have with everyone you meet then it seems to me that you will be at your most godly and upright, ready to meet Jesus. We pray. God of the outcast, the poor, the unhappy, God of shepherds and carpenters and unwed mothers, God of chaos and disruption and interruption, we come. We come to learn to be the best we can be in the midst of a life that seems to be more muddled and confused than ordered and certain. This Christmas, as we ponder the disruption caused by the arrival of your Son, open our hearts to the life and hope and joy and love He brings to all of us. Through the Jesus of Christmas, we pray. Amen. We sing together joy to the world.
we bring our gifts and offerings before God. Great God, our Redeemer, we sing your praises. Your glorious love shines in the face of Jesus, born a babe in this dark world. We marvel that he generously humbled himself to bring salvation. How precious is your gift of love. Let the light in our sanctuary and our songs of praise spill through the windows to neighbours dwelling in darkness. May our gifts and offerings reflect the light of Christ and as beacons of the night draw people far and near closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in our prayer for others and ourselves and I'll simply highlight some themes and allow space for you to pray your own prayers. For those greeting Christmas cold, hungry, afraid, we pray. For those greeting Christmas is another disappointment amongst the sea of disappointment, we pray. For those greeting Christmas at work, for those greeting Christmas alone, for ourselves as we greet Christmas, we pray. All these things we pray through Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we sing our closing carol, Come and Join the Celebration. And so as we go on from here, may we be filled with life 
and hope and joy and love. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to a wonderful Christmas.